Before the first game of the season, there's a sense of quiet that pervades the locker room. A mystery of sorts that hangs over the community. The work has been done, the preparation complete. 480 minutes, 40 quarters, and 10 games before we know the answer to the question that everyone wants to know. How y'all gonna be? Tonight, we relive those 576 minutes and celebrate a team that did it the right way, the 2022 Leeds Green Wave. Only the 12th team to reach the third round of the playoffs and the 10th to win 10 games. This team always seemed to find a way, even from the start. Well, I remember one of our trainers is sitting there before the game and she's injured and we haven't even played a play yet. So her mom has to come get her. We forgot the TVs for coaching on the sideline. So I'm thinking this is not going to be a good day. Uh, a lot of nerves going into that game. Didn't know the expectations. Uh, they didn't know the expectation of what we were, what we would do, and what we would become later in that season. So, uh, just a bunch of new folks, uh, but you know, just played our game, so it came out with a win. And we looked terrible on offense for a little while, and uh, but somehow the kids found a way to win. And you know, that first game, you always have to find yourself. And once we got uh, going in that game, I felt like we had uh, control of it. Even though the score wasn't massive, uh, I, I felt like we had control of the whole game. So I was proud of them. It's good to get the first win, bigger school. So that, I thought that was important for the long term. The Green Wave found a way to win with what would become their style, punishing defense and hard-nosed, timely offense. On a rain-filled night, the Green Wave rolled over Mortimer Jordan 21-7. Anxious to head home and take on 6A opponent Pell City. Uh, going into the Pell City game, we knew we had a really athletic quarterback who we knew the whole game we'd have to contain. Coach Coleman was teaching that all up. We practice, we put athletic guys at quarterback position. To, um, in practice, they showed us a great picture of it, and um, he helped us a lot in the game, made it seem easier in the game. It was harder in practice and easier in the game. So I think those guys, the whole defense, I think they uh, did a great job that game containing the quarterback. The Green Wave answered the challenge, holding Pell City to just 10 points, while the offense exploded in front of the home crowd for the first time of the season. I think at that point, I, I probably do. You know, there's not many games that we're going to play that we won't be able to win. So I was proud of our toughness. I was proud of the way our program uh, went out and did everything from warm-ups to the completion of the game. And I knew, I knew as well, and I already knew this before the season started, but we're a tough football team and we can do what we want to do on our terms and we play great defense, so you always got a chance. The next three games proved just that as Leeds outscored opponents 144 to 34. Defeating Springville, St. Clair, and Silicaga, the Green Wave have found their identity. We like, started playing as a team. We started figuring out who we was. So after that, I just figured that we started like playing better, like up to our expectations. Playing on the other side of our defense, it definitely takes a lot of pressure off our offense's back because there's a little more wiggle room if we screw up. We can rely on the defense to stop and get back out there. But every time we're on, we try to take as long as we can to long drives, run eight minutes off the clock, give our defense a break so they're fresh like they were the first minute of the first quarter. Well, it's guts, blood, sweat, and tears. Then there's the trenches that you can ask the D-line, the O-line. It's really the most fun I could, you could probably have in football. It's constant contact on the O-line. We love it. I don't, that, I'm just speaking for everybody for here because I, I love it. It's a ton of fun. Our kids did not care who the opponent was. They were going to play at Leeds level, and that was the difference in this team and maybe some teams before where they would play up and down uh, uh, according to the competition. This team went out to take care of business. They did that, and we were happy to get back to Leeds, Alabama after that. Southside jumped out to an early lead 
but these points would be the first and the last for the Panthers that night. You know, our defense had done that all year. Anytime something happened, you know, Coach Wall and all the coaches on that side of the ball, they just did an outstanding job. Of, you know, you might get one on us, but we're going to dig our heels in. You're not getting two. And the fact that we blocked the extra point, it just says that every play matters. The defense dug their heels in, and the offense converted on a big play to jump out front for good. And so I remember, and I threw it, and I was like, it's a good ball. And then, you know, uh, Jalen, you know, caught it, and I really feel like that was the catch that put Jalen on the map. Um, it was what I like in a football team, which is they may play with you for a little bit. They may play with you one quarter, two quarters, maybe even three quarters. You keep doing what we do every single day, and eventually that's going to win out, and it did. But, man, what a great team that little bunch had. And, it was fun. That was a fun football game. It was fun coaching against those guys and their players played hard. I think that was probably the first goal I had written down for the season, beat Alexandria. Um, a team that they, they had us uh, uh, two years in a row, back to back years. Um, and especially the, 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 my last year, my junior year, when they blew us out, uh, a disappointing loss for us. But it was just. Um, Knowing that the that no, going into the season, you know, we, we knew that we were going to have to face those group of guys and, and, and give it our best shot, you know. Uh, they had us the last two years, so, uh, you know, there was no fear in their eyes towards us. Uh, well, I could see the, like, the upperclassmen that has played before. I could see that, like, this is a game that means something to them because they beat us very bad in two region championships and one was on our own, own field. And I could just tell, like, this is a this is a game that means something to them and that I should just go out there and do what I can. And as you can see, we did what we could do and we beat them. The green wave was relentless that night, using five takeaways and a physical run game to roll over the Valley Cubs from Alexandria, 23 to seven. I remember, uh, I knew it was coming. I remember I was running a lot of practice. So I knew it was coming uh, right up the field, right up the middle of the field. So I really like ready. Josh Lee has an interception as they're going in to make it a really close game. And from there, uh, our, our, our offense just controlled the game from that point forward. And, but what a great victory. I mean, that right there puts you in the driver's seat in the region and uh, leading to what everybody was wanting to see. Let's make one thing abundantly clear. When you play football for Leeds High School, you don't like Moody. And when you play for Moody High School, you can't stand Leeds. They say familiarity breeds contempt. And with these two schools separated by less than just 10 miles, this rivalry isn't just once a year, it's every single day. These two have actually only met on the field 14 times, with the Green Wave getting the better of their neighbors from up Highway 411, holding the edge 12 to two with one of the two Moody victories coming by way of a forfeit. This series has been the story of the hammer and the nail. Since the turn of the century, Leeds has outscored Moody 271 to 59. But over in Blue Devil country, well, there's a new sheriff in town. We're highly ranked, they're ranked. They're, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff coming from that side about how great things are going. So we just remain stealth, I remember that is I ask the kids just to remain stealth. And uh, you never know when that plane's gonna fly in and, and boy, the Leeds Green Wave. They may have been stealthy all week, but the Green Wave made plenty of noise that night. All right, Moody. That's my game right there. I always remember the Moody game because like, the Moody game, it was, the environment was tense. It was a rivalry game. Moody was undefeated, Leeds undefeated. And like, the winner was going to be region champions. And I feel like we had to prove ourselves because everybody was talking about since the summer, Moody was going to win, Moody going to blow y'all out. And I, I really had took that and I kept that in the back of my mind just for that night. Prove themselves, they did. The Green Wave scored two early touchdowns and a two-point conversion 
and held the number one offense in 5A to just 13 points, becoming the first team since 2015 to win a region championship. The lone unbeaten team in the region, how good does that sound? It's, hey, it's a blessing, it sounds so good. Hey, we came up short for two years, we finally finished it, we finally finished it. Leeds staked its claim on 411 and headed back home to finish region play against an always tough Lincoln team. Well, the Lincoln game, we knew from the past two years, they're a tough football team. It's always been a close game, and we just knew that we had to keep putting in the work that whole week to keep getting better and better that whole week to just beat Lincoln and keep going doing what we were doing. And I was more proud of that victory than the Moody victory because there is a tendency for humans to let down after a big event. The Green Wave did what it does as it rolled up 367 yards of offense and held Lincoln to just 37 yards rushing. Leeds completed the clean sweep of the region and got ready to make a run in the 2022 5A state playoffs. I want to go to a game that's saying about the possibility. That's how I want to go into the game. And this is not just any game, guys. This is the playoff. The team got the message. The offense and the defense took care of business, but it was the special teams that gave the Green Wave a jump start and the big first round win. Well, we scheme special teams just like we do offense and defense here. We're not a team that will, hey, this is our punt block, this is our kickoff return, and we're never changing it. I think that gives you a little bit of an edge. So that game, finally, uh, we had some, uh, we affected the punter in a great way. And we had seen evidence that a little pressure might affect him, and boy, it really made a big difference in that game and just kind of sealed it up for us. So, you know, special team, the kids that play on special teams to me are my favorite kids because they may be a starter, they may not be a starter, but you have to step outside your comfort zone in a way and do whatever the dirty work is necessary to be great at special teams. And the quickest way to lose a game is to be bad on special teams. So I always want to make sure that our teams are good on special teams. Lead stayed home for round two and put on a show on both sides of the ball. What I really loved is that they stayed too high the whole game. And you know, that gave us an opportunity to hit things that hit routes that we've never hit before because we always play teams with either one high or no high. Um, and then it also gave us an opportunity to run the ball really well that game. Uh, they're a old wing T team, so I mean, you pretty much know where they're gonna go where eventually they'll pull the quarterback, so you have to stay locked in on your keys and your jobs and. Uh, told the linebacking court that we can know a lot of great players, you gotta do your job, but you gotta do your job and make the play, so being able to be dominant do your job and make the play at the same time, you know, uh, just be that, that dominant force on the defense, kind of preach physicality. We knew they were going to be physical. We knew we had to hit the full back and we knocked them out the game. So uh, just a, a great job defensively overall. For the first time since 2015, the Green Wave advanced to round three, taking on Ramsey at historic Legion Field. You know, um, I'd never been to Legion Field in my life. Um, and I, I think when I first realized how big it was, it was when we first put on to that street by the church and you could see it and it was just huge. Man, I was so proud. We're at Legion Field, which is a place I got to play a lot of football. The kids have experienced the big time, uh, you know, big time stadium. and. They, they just amaze me with how great they played. I think, obviously, in my opinion, they were better athletically than us, and it didn't phase our kids one little bit. They came out, played an unbelievable three quarters, and I was, I was really amazed at how composed our team was. I felt like we should be there. 
and they believed we should be there. And we played great for three quarters. And, and then we blew a lead in the fourth quarter that still sticks with us to this day. And so that's, that was a tough game, but man, I was so proud. The fourth quarter rally by the Rams would be enough to propel them past the Greenway into the 5A state championship just two weeks later. The thing that kept ringing in my head was, we're not just a flash in the pan team. We, we belong among the elite in class 5A. When my season ended, I was very emotional. I was like, this is the last time I get to play as a Leeds Green. But it just showed me how much I appreciated playing for this team and how much I cared for playing for this team. Well, getting my first real role on the team and being able to pitch in to our winning, it meant a lot to me. And that's why it hurt so much when it was all lost. It was a hell of a ride. You know, I got to play more football than probably anybody had ever thought. I don't know, it's hard to put words to it. It's kind of a weird feeling because you're sad, but you're also happy that you're there for it. And it's just, you know, one of those things that you can't really explain. You just got to be there to experience it. It was kind of heartbreaking, but at the same time, all the memories that came with it are like going to be cherished for me. Um, yeah. Um, playing football for Leeds, it really opened up my eyes to playing football and kind of being there, understanding the game, learning it as I'm going, along with two positions. It really helped out a lot to just brought out my learning experience for that. And I'm glad that I played football. This really set like my definition of what football is. It's like, it's more than a game. It's it's just a way to build its friendship, its family, its everything. Football can be a whole lot more than a game. And games like that are really what set it apart and like helps you understand how important something can be to you. It means a lot. I, mean, I grew up, I've never, I never really played football my whole life. And then I moved to Leeds. Everybody talked me into it. You know, that first season, my freshman year, I didn't get to play, I was a transfer. So I, I, I helped out any way I could. Uh, and then that next year, I started my first year playing football. I loved it and I stuck with it. Man, just going out there, like preparing for the, uh, the game, going out there, going for the, uh, in the run, I mean the run tunnel. It's just, and then like CJ telling us like speeches and everything, we in the locker room getting hyped up. It's just, it's just a great experience. I mean, I mean, going around, talking to your buddies, all that stuff, it's just, it's just fun. Man, I am so proud of the Leeds Greenway players, coaches, cheerleaders, filmers, everybody involved. It's just an unbelievable place, unbelievable year, and now we get to do it again. 100 teams has taken the field with the name Leeds across their chest. 100 teams have felt the pride of this community as they play the game that they love. But very few have been able to dog ear the pages of history so that they will not be forgotten. It only seems fitting that this, the 100th team in Leeds football history, did just that. For 12 fall Friday nights, they wore that block L with pride and embodied what it meant to be from Leeds. It turns out that that 100th version of the Leeds Green Wave is going to be all right. Ow! Oh! Now, where are my dudes?